You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Eric here from Drake Wing Gaming. If you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you another let's play episode of Psychic Connections: Quinn's Path. So, the last place we left off is well, we just called Zoe to inform her that Quinn got socked in the eye by his roommate. So, what are we gonna do? We're gonna go over there and confront that dummy. Yeah, gonna beat the crap out of Greg. See how you like it, Greg. Anyway, guys, hope you sit back and enjoy. Let me entertain you for the next 20 minutes, and let's jump right back into it. All right, Alarm Chan, you are primed and ready to go. Okay. <clears throat> Take me off speakerphone. I do as the panda demands. Her voice drops to a very quiet but sharp tone. So, this is serious, and I'm really hoping you'll be open to this idea. Is it fine if Quinn stays with you until we can get this whole roommate situation sorted? Yeah, that shouldn't be a problem. Are you sure? There's a chance this becomes a more permanent living situation. Well, not having a roommate certainly had perks. I came to the college fully prepared to have a roommate. The fact that I'm even getting a say on it is a say on it at all is lucky enough, despite the circumstances. Believe me, Zoe, I get it, and it's fine. I feel better about I feel better about that than a lot of the alternatives. Thank you, Mason. I promise I'll find a way to make it up to you. In the meanwhile, I'll be up to your room in about thirty minutes. I expect I'll see you both there. Definitely. We'll see you in a little while. I hang up the phone and sit down with Quinn on the bottom bunk. I felt that conversation went fairly well, but Quinn still seems nervous. Why is he still so stressed? Was telling Zoe that big of a deal? No, it's just... I hate this. Hate what? This whole situation. I wish I could just snap my fingers and be in the future when I'm past all this. That'd be rather convenient. Looking at my own hand, I do find myself wondering. Seriously? I was just checking. Yeah, I don't know how any of this works, so I thought maybe if I focused, then something would happen. I think you'd notice if you suddenly lost hours or days of time. Hearing him say this, I realize how absurd it'd be if that ended up being my psychic ability. I already lost enough time as it is. I don't think I'd want to give up any more, good or bad. What about your visions? Is there any trigger there? Not really. The worst part is that when they happen, that is that they happen while I'm asleep. Because you can't tell if it... Wait a second. First part is when they happen. Okay. Because you can't tell if it was a dream or a vision. <sighs> Alright guys, I just woke up. Bet, and I wake up every time that happens. Was it a bad dream, or was it a vision? Sometimes I can't really tell. Jeez. So I imagine there are some visions you're still unsure about. Of course. One time I had a vision of Jude and Aiden going skinny dipping in a lake. Together? Yeah, but I still can't help but assume that it's just a daydream. Well, definitely a pleasant thing to picture, it's also difficult to imagine the two of them being willing to do such a thing. I know what you're thinking. Hard to imagine, right? Aiden would be all, uh, I don't want to get in this filthy mud water. <laughs> Meanwhile, Jude would be all, I'm not getting in here with, him, with any of you watching. You know better than I would. And I, th but I think you're probably right. I know I'm right. Those two keep walking around with sticks up their stupid butts. The two of us laugh, and time flies by, and time flies by before we know it as we continue chatting away about little nothings like that. Hey, Zoe, come on in. Great, you're both still here. Yep, I'm still here. I'm queer. My eye looks gross. Get used to it. Ha ha ha, you're a real comedian. I brought some medicine for when you're done cracking jokes. So he pulls out a small first aid kit and retrieves a small bottle of cream. It's supposed to help with the swelling. Do you want me to do it, or should Mason do it instead? Whoa, you want me to rub ointment on his eye? What if I press too hard? If it's not something you're comfortable with, it's no big deal. Can I just put it on myself? You probably could, but it's not like you can see it if it's fully been absorbed with your eye closed. I guess not. In that case, Mason, do you mind? No, I suppose I don't. If you really want me to, I will. Zoe hands me the small bottle of ointment and instructs me to squeeze out a small dollop into my hands. In the meanwhile, Quinn shuts his eyes while I approach him cautiously. I notice his small body shaking as my hand inches closer towards his swollen peeper. Wow, that really sounds... That really sounds... Lewd. 
Keep those eyes shut. I'm about to start. Okay, just be gentle. I've never exactly done this before. Don't think about what he just said made my heart skip a beat. Why am I suddenly so nervous about this? Because you thought he was talking about sex. My hands start slightly shaking as I make contact with his eyelid. Quinn twitches in response, but doesn't move away. Wow, that's cold! Sorry, just need a couple of seconds. Does it hurt at all? Not really, it just feels strange. I mean, it's kind of similar to rubbing it yourself, but instead it's getting rubbed by another by another hand. It doesn't feel bad, though. God, this whole thing is sex! <laughs> Alright, well, I'm almost done. Rubbing Quinn's eye like this is a strange experience. I'm finding myself studying his face more closely. Without being this close, I don't think I would have ever I would have even noticed how long his eyelashes actually are. They actually look quite delicate. Almost elegant, even. Is it... Is it done yet? Huh? Oh, yeah, just finished. Quinn opens his good eye, while the other squints as best as it can under the swelling. So, how long until the swelling goes down? It might take a couple of days, provided you also use this cold pack. Zoe then produces a small blue pouch with a distinct frosty exterior. It looks fresh out of a freezer. Do not press down on your eye with this. Just let it rest easily on your eye. Gently on your eye. I also brought you this. Zoe pulls out a small, a small black box out of her hoodie pocket and passes it to Quinn. What's that? A present from Aiden. It's far too inconvenient for him to be unable to reach Quinn. Quinn opens the box to find a sleek new phone inside. It looks rather expensive compared to mine. Thanks, Zoe. I'm assuming he already had all my information transferred? You know Aiden, always thinking three steps ahead. He really didn't need to get me the newest model, though. My phone wasn't worth that much. Oh, come on. The guy's loaded. He likes spending on his friends. One phone isn't going to break his bank. It's not like all that money is really going anywhere. Right. Quinn's mouth hangs in a, hangs in a frown for a moment, but quickly shifts back into a smile. Well, tell him thanks for me if you see him before I do. Will do. I actually should probably get going anyway. I still have a lot to do today. I'm going to be texting you about this roommate situation, though. We can't let that ass get away with this. Zoe moves into hug Quinn for a, moves into Quinn for a hug. Quinn, lo Quinn looks shocked for a moment before bringing his arms around and around her. The two stand there quietly for a moment while I just watch from the sides. However, at the last second, Quinn pushes Zoe away. Shut up! I'm not doing that. Okay, if you say so. Just remember, trees won't make the lemonade for you. Anyway, I've got a jet. Thanks for getting a hold of me, Mason. If anything comes up, don't hesitate to let me know. Of course, Zoe. See you around. Oh, by the way, I was texting with Aiden. If it's still good with you, we can head out on Saturday. To see the stars? Yeah, that works for me. You guys are going stargazing and you didn't invite me? That's like the rudest thing anyone has ever done to me. Zoe and I look at Quinn incredulously. There's no universe where not inviting him to this was ruder than hitting him in the face. It's not like that. We're going as part of an assignment. So, maybe I wanted to come along just for fun. Besides, I never get to spend time with Aiden. He's always busy with something else going on, and while we're there, he won't be running away to do anything else. This is true. That's true. He won't be able to escape. Zoe's face flashes with a devilish grin that just screams mischief. With a nefariousness, could, what nefariousness could she be plotting? Thanks, Quinn. I think I've got an idea how to solve one of our issues. I've got to get going, but I'll text you both later. Before Quinn or myself can get another word in, Zoe rushes out the door, leaving the two of us alone once more. Quinn looks at me before laying himself down on the bottom bunk and studying his new phone. So, what now? Well, I've got class in a few hours that I have to attend. Though, to be honest, I'm just considering just, I'm considering just skipping on account of the whole being unable to see more than six feet in front of me. Right. That makes sense. Quinn hasn't been wearing glasses this whole time, so it might be safe to assume they broke. And I guess we're staying in, then. Yep. Sucks, too. I really wanted to drag you over to the arcade today. The arcade? Yeah, it's this really classic place. A lot of different machines, too. I take Jude sometimes, and we face off and dance, and we face off and dance off. Face off and dance off. He always kicks my ass, though, so I was looking forward to winning for once. Jude dances? 
Yeah, he's annoyingly good at it, too. Though I guess it doesn't help that I'm kind of awkward when it comes to dancing. I'm gonna beat him one of these days. I just need to start with someone easier. Someone like me? Maybe. Well, I guess I can temper my expectations knowing Quinn wasn't actually asking me out on a date. Unless his idea of a date was using me as a practice opponent to get better at a game to beat Jude. I didn't really take him for the competitive type, based on how he's acted in class or around the others. Then again, it's obvious everyone in the group has multiple layers to them that I've yet to see. What's so funny? Huh? You were chuckling. I thought maybe I said something funny. Oh, no, I guess I was just thinking there's still so much I don't know about any of you. Hmm, that's it. I'll just tell you some of our best stories. Your best stories? Yep, we've got so many. Like the time Jude got his antlers stuck in one of his shirts. He got stuck? Well, of course. So, like, his antlers fall out in early spring and grow back in during the late summer. He got used to not having to put clothes on with his antlers in mine, but one day he wore a shirt that was just way too tight. I practically died laughing when he begged us to help him out of the shirt that was stuck over his face. In the end, we had to cut him out of the damn thing, but it was still the funniest thing I'd ever seen. The mental image of the giant deer rendered helpless by a simple shirt is nothing if not comedic. Oh, there's also the time Elliot accidentally spilled hot coffee on Aiden's lap. Or the time Zoe and I dressed in drag. Gosh, I don't even know how we're going to fit all these stories in one night. Quinn spends the rest of the afternoon sharing stories with me. I do wonder how many of them are true. Many of the tales seem like they'd be unlikely unless psychic abilities also cause a naturally klutz-like nature. No, it's just Quinn. Quinn is the klutz. After it snapped, she started whipping him in the butt with it. It was so funny, he'd spent 300 bucks on that freaking belt and was, ta and was talking up the brand. Jeez, and what did he do after it broke? So he ended up making a bracelet out of it. Oh, speak of the devil. Mason! Zoe! <laughs> I just got out of class. Is Quinn still there? Yeah, he is. Awesome. Okay, don't let him leave. I'm on my way now. I guess she's on her way over. Darn, and here I thought we'd have some time have time for more roommate bonding. Did she say that what she wanted? No, but I guess we'll know when she gets here. This is what I was talking about before, by the way. She starts acting crazy whenever something like this happens. I feel like she isn't acting that crazy, though. If anything, Quinn is under is underreacting to how serious the situation is. He was punched in the face last night and basically forced to leave his own room. Maybe I just have a lower tolerance, but if it were me, I would have flipped out already. Meanwhile, he's acting like it's no big deal. So what do you do while we wait? That was fast. Sure enough, on the other side of the door stood a red panda that had been that had been by earlier today. Alright, I rushed over here as quickly as I could. Did you forget something? Why did you rush over? Well, we need to get Quinn's old room key and replace it with the key to your room. Additionally, we need to get his things from his old room. Are you sure we need to do that? I don't have that much stuff. Yes, we do. I also need to have a conversation with Greg, anyway. I'm sure he'll lie to me, but I'm required to listen to his side of the story. Quinn's energy seems to deflate at the prospect of seeing his previous roommate again. I don't blame him either. Greg seems to like a serious asshole. Don't stress about it, Quinn. Zoe and I will back you up. We'll grab your stuff, let your roommate know he's a giant prick, and then mosey. Right. If you want, I can call the others too if you feel like you need more help. No, I just, the three of us should be fine. I just, just get this over with. Following Quinn out the door, he leads us towards his dorm room, which is located at the other end of the hall. We're on the same floor. Huh. Well, at least that means we won't have to carry anything upstairs. Plus, who knows, maybe he won't even be in the room. Yeah. Quinn slides his keycard into the door with a click, and with a click he opens it, leading us into his former room. The first thing I notice are the clothes thrown about everywhere. The place looks like a mess and smells faintly like tobacco. The second thing is a large alligator laying in one of the bunks carving a wooden stump with a knife. This must be Greg. He looks a little bigger than I'd pictured in my head. He looks up at us and gives us a very nasty look. The fuck do you all want? Greg, I presume. We're here for Quinn's stuff. Aw, oh, you moving out, short stack? Like fuck, I'm tired of dealing with your crap. 
Hurry up and take what you need and get out. No problem. Zoe looks at Quinn, who nods at her before rushing over to the closet and grabbing a duffel bag that he begins filling with his things. Greg lays back in his bunk. Occasionally, he tilts his head to look at something, grinning to himself. It isn't until I follow his eyes that I realize he keeps looking at Zoe's ass whenever she bends over to grab something for Quinn. I know I shouldn't cause problems, that I should grit my teeth, but everything this guy does is pissing me off. I must have been staring because his beady eyes soon focus on me and his face twists into a scowl. You got a problem, String Bean? I've got a few, but for starters, I'd appreciate it if you stopped staring at my friend's ass. He what? Hey now, I'm just enjoying the view. It's a compliment. Besides, what's it to you? Is she a girlfriend or something? With how girly your face is, I figured you were probably a snowflake like Cottontail over there. That's it. I don't care if he's bigger. I'm gonna slam my face in his, his fist in his ugly snout. I take a step forward, but Quinn grabs my hand. I feel him shaking. He must be so freaked out. Then I realize that he's not the one shaking. I am. I got so worked up I was trembling and I hadn't even noticed. No wonder he didn't want you to know about this. He would have caved the guy's skull in by now. Look, Greg. I'm an RA. After we're finished here, I plan on reporting you for physical violence. Do you really want to add sexual harassment to what the dean ends up reading? Oh no! I wouldn't want to be reported to the dean! That'd just be awful. Do I look like I care? You're free to try. You got a pretty good face, too, by the way. Maybe when you're done helping these losers, you'll stop back by. The thought of what you're implying makes me want to gag. Well, I figured the gagging could wait till you came back. But fine, plenty of other chicks that want me. We've been in here for not even ten minutes. So I already want to kill him. How did Quinn even go almost a week with this guy? Hey, Mason, can you grab that microwave? Hell no! You're not taking my microwave! It, it's not yours. My friend Elliot got it for me. Right, and you left it here, which makes it mine. It's literally a law. Pretty sure that only applies after an extensive period of time and on your property. You don't own this dorm room. The college does. So we're taking the microwave. You know, you're starting to piss me off, bitch. Zoe and Greg begin staring daggers at each other while I grab the microwave like Quinn asked. Did you have anything else? No, this is basically everything. Zoe, quit trying to melt the douche with your brain and let's go. He's lucky I can't melt him with my brain, big dumb scaled piece of no good rotten. Dragging Zoe out of the room, I give the large gator one final glare before slamming the door behind us. With a microwave in my hand, a small monitor in Zoe's hand, and a large duffel in Quinn's, we all return to my room. Ooh, tension. Mm. Pulling Quinn's things into the room, we all release the built-up tension after having to deal with Greg. May we never have to deal with him again. Well, hopefully you won't. I'll still have to deal with him throughout the reporting period. I'm gonna make sure that asshead gets what's coming to him. You need help unpacking? Nope, I've got my duffel full of stuff, and I'm not in any rush. Honestly, all I want to do is shut my eyes and skip straight to the weekend. Oh, speaking of the weekend, he's a pretty good artist. Zoe grabs me and pulls me to the side. She looks behind us at Quinn before speaking to me in a hushed tone. So, I was thinking we should bring the others camping with us this weekend. Huh? I'm not opposed, but why? Well, Quinn clearly needs to pick me up, and I tried to fix and I tried fixing things with Jude and Aiden, but they need a good push. Elliot has a car that he could take us all in, and it could really help bond the whole group. It's a win-win. Plus, I've got some ideas for testing what your psychic ability might be. It might not work, but I won't know until we try. I guess. It's not like I had any other plans this weekend. Are you sure the others are going to be okay with this? No, I'm sure it'll work out, though maybe don't tell Aiden or Jude that the other will be there. How did you hear that? Quinn's face becomes unamused as he proceeds to point at the giant appendages sticking out of his skull. Right. Figures aren't for show. It was silly we even tried to have a secret discussion. Alright, it's settled then. I'll text the others and make arrangements. I have to do it outside of the group channel to keep suspicions low. Aw, oh, this is gonna be so great! We'll wash marshmallows and tell scary stories and, look at and just look at the stars! When are we going? Tomorrow afternoon. Aiden doesn't have any classes, and I only have one in the morning. 
Quinn and I share one at noon. Is that going to be a problem? It shouldn't. It shouldn't be. It should only take us about an hour to get there. So if you meet us at the cafe right after we after we should be good to go. That <laughs> sounds good. This is actually pretty exciting. I can't remember the last time I'd ever done anything even remotely like camping. It feels like I've been cooped up so much over the past year. So this is going to be a good change of pace. Well then, I'll see you both tomorrow. Bye, Zoe. Zoe leaves and I see the big goofy smile on Quinn's face. Until now I hadn't noticed, but his nose twitches when he gets excited. Gah, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to sleep tonight. This is so exciting. Oh, alright guys. Uh, it is time to end the video. I want to thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!